Okay guys, uh, it's time to do the uh, landing gear doors. Now these have always been a pain in the ass. And the reason why is there's no room inside. Um, I used to have a, uh, the first time I designed, I should say, I had a retract which would rotate in. It was a Turnergy rotating retract. Supposed to be a heavy duty, cost about 75, 80 bucks. And after the second cycle, they broke. So I bought another set. Third cycle, they broke. So I had to go to regular retract. So I figured I would just go with a regular retract. That caused me a problem where now the, uh, the tire was going to hit the gear doors. So I modified the gear doors, and I'll show you what I did. Um, that caused me another problem, but anyhow, we'll get to that. So I modified the gear doors. So instead of having the formal or conformal doors, which fit very nicely, I then had to do doors which were... Uh, with a big bulge in it to fit the tire so the tire would fit in now somewhere along the line uh, i guess i don't know whether i cut my mold by accident or whatever but now nothing fits here it's terrible and it's so hard to do the hinges so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start all over again instead of uh I'm going to make a, a female mold then a male mold so that I get the smooth finish. I decided uh, to just see what condition the plug was in, which I had stored. So it's perfect condition where I need it. So I'm going to use the plug just to make up a whole new female mold, a permanent mold for these two front gear doors, and then we'll modify them. So I'm going to just wax it right now and uh, lay it up. All right, so I've got it all taped up. I've got it waxed. So now I'm just going to put some uh, PVA or mold release agent over the tape and everything. And this will help me get the uh, glass cloth off easier. And I'm just doing it with a brush for this one. So that's all I need. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to get it everywhere. So I've put the, the tape on so um, it helps protect the uh, rest of the mold because I've not waxed it all. And uh, it'll allow me to remove this uh, female mold, which. Uh, We'll have ready once we've got the uh, layup done. All right, fellas, ladies. I'm just finishing mixing the epoxy. The uh, PVA mold release agent is cured. I put it on about 20 minutes ago. I've cut some cloth and uh, we're going to throw that on now. So let's get to it. All right, so no big deal, just get it on. I'm pre wetting this, obviously. Just making sure I get everywhere. And I'm starting off with three quarter ounce cloth. So I just want to sort of dab it into position. Whoops, we've missed down there already. Now we'll spread it out a little bit. Big thing here, I need to get it into this crease really good. The only uh, place I'm really concerned about is where these gray lines are. That's actually where the uh, door is. So I've overlapped a little bit so I can cut it. 
and uh, I'm going to put just a couple of layers of the uh, two ounce on just to uh, stop any uh, cloth pattern from coming through. This uh, just gets me in my conformity and reduces the possibility of voids. I'm not going to make this mold thick, I'm just going to use about four layers of uh, six ounce after I've done this two ounce just to uh, be stiff enough to uh, start forming up the shape of my gear doors and that will all become apparent in a movie or two from now and you notice I'm not getting a ton of resin on I'm letting these two ounce layers suck up the majority of the resin which I've already put on otherwise the cloth could start floating around and we don't want that but this is a great way of uh, doing access panels and uh, gear doors any kind of detail that you need to make a mold of to attach to the uh, finished model oh, the camera's picking all this up it's kind of hard to position the camera all right now it's time for couple of layers of the six ounce I'm just going to stick that there okay this uh, right side is finished now as you can see uh, I think I used uh, four layers of six ounce two layers of two and one of three quarter for the first layer so this is the left side of the fuselage. So total time to do this, 35 minutes. So these surface molds are real easy to do. They're quick and fast. So we'll let that cure now uh, for the next 24 hours or so. Maybe a little longer because it's so cold. And then uh, we'll get back to it. All right. It's the next day and it's time to uh, get this uh, part off the uh, plug. So I'm just going to peel back the masking tape and then I'm going to just slowly start to ease it up. And then we'll see the air getting underneath this part. Go, it's time to release. There we go. All right, should theoretically come right off. All right, so the part is done, it's come out good by the look of it. So, from this back side, so I can see where all the panel lines are, it's time to uh, trim this paper off I'm just using some uh, metal cutters just small guys that I have and it allows me just to cut through staying well away from those panel lines which are these which mark the perimeter of the part that we want to make all right so these uh, I've got the tape off and uh, what I want to do now is just very lightly mark where these panel lines are. I'm going to go to the outside of the panel line. So I got about maybe a sixteenth of an inch of fudge to play with. And this is just for rough cutting this mold. And then I'll send down to the uh, actual panel line where I want the exact fit to be. But I'll do that using the other side as reference because that's uh, built in. Okay, I've uh, redone these uh, master molds. So I've got the uh, 
left one and the right one. So what I have to do now is uh, wax these, lay them up with the uh, PVA and lay up some new parts so that I get the uh, basis for these. And then I have to then build, start building them up with uh, foam to get the shape I want so that the wheel will fit inside. So that's uh, what we've got to do next.